India, there are 800 million people who lack access to modern energy. Energy from the wind and the sun offer new opportunities. How can we use these energy sources to tackle the problem of energy poverty? So more than 800 million people, and they use sources like wood, charcoal, and oil lamps, and this often goes along with health problems, you know, with fewer opportunities for doing business, and for children, but you know, difficulties to study in the evening or at night. The current solutions to energy access struggle to meet the rising and diverse demand in Indian villages. Smart grids are seen as a solution to this problem. Smart grids are energy networks that align the demand and supply of energy by using ICT. ICTs help to distribute the available electricity to where it's needed. Our project is about developing and implementing smart grids in rural India. And we do this together with an interdisciplinary and international team, both from academia and from the private sector. It is important to work in an interdisciplinary team because questions around smart grid development go beyond the technical. For example, there are many sociological questions. So what happens when you introduce a new technology in a village environment? Does everyone get equitable access to it? Does everyone derive equal benefits from it? A growing body of research says that issues of power, politics and gender are important in understanding and resolving these issues. For example, some people in the villages are socially, politically and economically stronger than the others. These people often get control of the energy access infrastructure. This makes it difficult for other weaker social groups to get equitable access. Even within households, male members are often in control of decision making. Even when the household has access to clean lighting, it has often limited access, for example, with solar lanterns. In these cases, who gets to use the lantern, at what time, and for what purposes, is often dictated by unequal gender relations. These are some of the questions that we are thinking about in the project. Of course, the project itself doesn't take shape in isolation. We need to think about the institutional context, like the policy measures in place, the government bodies that are active, among other things. But before all this happens, we need to think about the design. Technology design is always ethically laden. Uh, the choices designers make impact people for better or worse. And design always embodies some vision of the good life. For example, a rural spark has designed an energy router with 16 USB ports. So you can charge 16 devices, lamps or mobile phones, for example. And this design suggests that uh, rather than keeping this energy just for yourself, you should share it. Of course, you can take ethics into account in your design, but people still have to accept it. The gold standard is deliberation. You sit around the table and you talk about the technology. Of course, it's very difficult to do if you're Dutch designers and you're working in rural India. So what some companies uh, do is uh, put their prototypes out there as fast as possible and see how people respond to that. It works for those companies, but is it also just and inclusive? That's what I aim to find out. Well, the issue of energy poverty is not going to be solved in a single day. And this is why we focus on long-term studies, which helps us to reflect not only on technical issues, but also on ethical ones, also on sociological ones. And this helps us to actually redesign the technology. Well, the project is based here in Eindhoven University of Technology. And in India, we work together with Perry University, based in Delhi. The two partners from the industry sector are PRE, Power Research Electronics, and Rural Spark. PRE develops the technology, and Rural Spark commercializes and implements the technology in India. But in the next four years, we will work closely with all involved partners 
we'll go to the villages, do lots of field work, we will live there, and we do all this in order to find solutions which benefits the people most. <laughs>